So Colonel Brown, uh, just a little background, she was involved, and in, in fact, she really was the spearhead, the catalyst for the facility redesign for innovative learning project that MGM Works handled earlier in the year. And basically it was the classroom of the future, we're gonna talk about that, but the classroom of the future is really what it was about and trying to design what a PME classroom could look like. So there was a challenge out there, we had three companies come in and there was a winner that was chosen, but the ideas were all great. So Colonel Brown, can you talk about classroom of the future or the ideas the yeah. concepts behind that, what you're trying to accomplish. Sure. So, um, first of all, thanks for all the folks that came out here today from industry. Um, this is a real thing, and thanks for inviting us out Absolutely. here. I I'll tell you that, so the Classroom of the Future concept um, came out of Hurricane Michael, which had pretty much leveled Tyndall, uh, which uh, is the location of one of our NCO academies uh, down there, area NCO Academy. And so um, as Tyndall has uh, been rebuilding itself over the, the last uh, year and a half into what is uh, they're coining as a smart base, we wanted to make sure that our NCO Academy, when it returned, was um, built in line with that new infrastructure and technologies mm -hmm. and so forth. And um, our Air University commander was absolutely behind this and it was really exciting because he wanted to use this NCO Academy as the catalyst for what uh, a classroom of the future would look like. Um, so not just for enlisted PME, but for um, PME as a whole. So um, in partnering with uh, MGM Works, we were able to bring out and, and have a competition of sorts with, uh, with some private industry to, to uh, let us look at the, this. They took a look at the problem set and they, they um, presented to us what that solution would look like. Um, and so what was really exciting about it was um, just kind of turning uh, education delivery on its head. And um, you know uh, the the flexibility, agility that 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 uh, students operate with now um, is is a little bit confined sometimes in our classrooms at present that they uh, they put so many ideas and and it, it was just it's just been exciting to be able to use a lot of those ideas and then and that that avenue to be able to move forward with that classroom that um, that's that school down at Tyndall, but then also how are we going to outfit the rest of our schools across EPME as a whole? So with understanding that you're, you know, that I think and going with uh, General Brown talking about the importance of innovation and that we're going to lose if we don't innovate. And that's not just weapon systems. That's innovating our folks. That's innovating education and so forth and so on, I believe. So with that said, you graduated ROTC in 1995. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Not trying to dime you out. But you graduated in 95. So 25 years later. Yeah. Right. How has education changed from when you were in the classroom in that time period and now how have students changed? Maybe that's a better way to say it. Right. How have the students changed and, and what, what do we need to do? Right. I think, uh, um, I think the biggest change is maybe the generational change in how we learn, mm -hmm. um, how I learned and how, uh, how students learn today. And, and it is not fixed. Um, so what I mean by that is it, it really can't be um, a one size fits all. Um, we've got to be able to, to deliver education in ways that's ad adaptable and agile. Um, and, you know, it, to General Brown, you know, when he talks about our students being our our biggest strategic advantage, um, they are they come to us more educated with you know broader, diverse and backgrounds and experiences, mm -hmm. and just being able to to harness that in unique ways that that allow them to learn um, through as many different um, modalities and um, methods that we can to. To, to harness that that experience to be able to solve big Air Force problems, so I, I would I would say that's the exciting thing about you know opportunities like this to mm -hmm. be able to present new ideas of how to deliver that education. So when I when I watch Air Force commercials, they're all very cool technology satellites F 22s F 35s all that kind of, but then they come into the classroom, 
And they're like, why are we still doing it this way? Does that impact their motivation? Does that impact learning, do you think? I, I think that the classroom of the future experience for me um, that I got out of that was the answer to that is absolutely. Um, you know, being able to, um, to, to break up classrooms into smaller groups, to large groups, just to be able to, mm -hmm. to move around. I, I think even the, the open spaces, the collaboration, um, I think all of that feeds into ideas. Um, and you know, the, the, the classroom of today uh, in the restructured curriculum that our team has be able to, been able to put out, our teachers are no longer um, uh, just espousing, espousing uh, off the, the curriculum. It's more of a facilitated um, experience where our, our students are actually um, part of that whole uh, instruction. And, and that's that's a really good thing. You know, we talked about the experiences that they bring in. Sure. So letting them share that in a way that is not just um, fed from the podium. So. Awesome. Okay, very good. So my last question for you is this. It's been said that this is, this is a big elephant. This is, it's, it, you, the only way to eat it is one bite at a time. This elephant <laughs> of PME and infusing technology. Right. What would be your first bite? If, you were to, if they were to say, hey, Colonel Brown, what's the first bite we need to take? What would it be? What I would say to that, though, is um, I do believe in one bite at a time. But I will say that, um, you know, even back to General Brown's philosophy on accelerate, change, or lose, is that we can't move slow. We really need to move out. Um, and But how I would address that is is developing the requirement, understanding, you know, what is the outcome we're trying to achieve, um, and then letting that creative, you know, uh, team mm -hmm. inside and outside the Air Force actually um, come up with those ideas of how to execute that that plan to get to that outcome, um, rather than um, uh, really prescribing how to Good. get there. Good. Well, that's great. I'm glad you say that because that's certainly in line with where I think AFWORKS is going and where I think the Air Force needs to go. So we're going to talk more about that, especially at the end when we're going to wrap it up. But Colonel Brown, thank you so much for Absolutely. your time. I really appreciate you being here and thank you for giving us your, your thoughts about this because I think everybody really wants to know what the next steps are. So thank please you. give her a hand, ladies thank and gentlemen. You.